Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back. Patrick here and in this video we're going to do another example dealing with hypothesis testing. So the population in a city is believed to get seven and a half hours of sleep per night with a standard deviation of 0.8 hours. A researcher believes that the number is lower than that. A sample of 80 people is taken and the mean is 7.25 hours. At a 1% significance level, is there evidence the researcher is correct? So the first thing I like to do with these types of questions is figure out is that population standard deviation known or not? Is it mentioned anywhere in the question? And notice that it is. When we're talking about the population, we're told the standard deviation is 0.8 hours. So in this case, it is given, it is known. So we know that we're going to be doing a Z test. We're going to be basing the hypothesis test on the Z distribution. After I know that, next thing I like to do is figure out what's my null hypothesis and what's my alternative hypothesis. So what are we testing for? Notice that a researcher comes along and says that they believe that the number of hours of sleep is lower than 7.5. So currently it's believed to be 7.5, but the researcher says they think it's lower than that. So notice that they're going towards, they're testing towards a certain direction. They don't just say that the number is different than 7.5 hours, they're saying it's lower than that. So the alternative hypothesis, what we're testing for, notice that we're testing whether that uh, average hours of sleep per night is going to be less than 7.5. So the opposite of that, remember the null is just the opposite, it's greater than or equal to 7.5. And so notice, just by the way the null and the alternative hypothesis is structured, we know we're dealing with a one-tailed test. More specifically, we're dealing with a left-tailed test. So visually what's going to happen, if we draw this out as a distribution, is we got 7.5 in the middle right? That's the uh, current believed population mean 7.5 hours. And if there's enough evidence, so at some point, if there's enough evidence that the, um, the mean is less than 7.5, so this here is going to be the rejection region, Significance level is 1%, so this rejection region is 1% here. If there's enough evidence that the sample, a certain size sample is falling here, then we could reject that null. Then we can say that there is evidence that the researcher is correct, that, that average hours of sleep is less than 7.5. But we got to figure out some kind of critical value here. Right? So notice there's only one critical value because this is a one tail test, a left tail test. So this rejection region here, it's 1%. So this acceptance region or non rejection region, where we're not going to reject the null, is 99%. Now, if you remember, we don't actually deal with uh, the number of hours on this axis here. We have to convert those to a Z distribution, right? A standard Z distribution. So this 7.5, when we convert it to a standard Z distribution, we know the standard Z distribution has a mean of zero. And then we're going to get a critical value on that standard Z distribution. So number of ways to get it, what you can do is if you're working with the positive Z table, you can look up because um, notice that this is going to be in the negative region, right? This critical value is going to be a negative Z score because it's to the left of zero. Well, you could just look up on the Z table, the positive portion, because it's going to be perfectly symmetrical. So this here, if it's 1%, notice this here is going to be 99%. 
So you would look up in the Z table that probability of 0.99. Another way to get the critical value is with the stats calculator. So you can go to the main menu, hit stat, hit F5 for distribution, F1 for the normal, right? Because this is a Z test. And then F3 for inverse normal because we're looking for a certain Z score. And uh, with the table, if you're only given a table with positive Z values, then you got to sort of get the positive Z score, which would be 2.33, and then you reflect it, get negative 2.33. But with a calculator, what's nice is you can get this negative right away. So if this data here, so you go through this, you get to this input screen here, you would put variable for data. The tail you're looking at, it's a left tail right here. And then the area is 1%, so you would put 0 0.01 over here. And this is for a standard normal distribution, so the standard deviation is 1, and the mean is uh, 0. And when you execute that, you would get negative 2.33. You could have also put right tailed, and then you could have put the area as 0.99, right? If you were looking at this whole portion as the right tail, and you would still get negative 2.33. So either way works. There's a bunch of ways to figure this out. So I feel like using the calculator, it's easier than using the Z table if you are using the calculator, right? So notice that getting this critical value, it has nothing to do with the, um, the number of hours of sleep in this scenario. So notice we didn't even use the 7.25 we didn't use the 0 0.8. The only thing we use the 0 0.8 for is to know that we're dealing with a Z distribution. So that was important because you're either going to be getting this critical value on a Z distribution or a T distribution when you're looking at one sample of the population mean. So that's all we use that for. We didn't even use the sample size. So first thing to know is the standard deviation known and then what's the significance level. And once you know those two things, that's all the critical value depends on, right? So critical value, negative 2.33. So let's do a quick review of what we've done so far. We have first step was, is the population standard deviation known? It was known, so we know we're going to be doing a Z test. Next step, got the null and alternative hypothesis to know, are we doing a two-tailed test? Are we doing a one tail test and is it left or right? And it's a one tail test and it's a left tail test. Third step was getting the critical value. And then the, um, the fourth step is getting the test statistic. And this test statistic is going to depend on the sample that we took. So we want to know where is it going to fall? Is it going to be in the rejection region or the acceptance region where we're not going to reject this null over here? So this test statistic, let's call it the Z test statistic because we're using the Z distribution. I mentioned the formula in a previous example. It's basically the sample mean minus the uh, population mean all over the population standard deviation over the square root of n. So when we plug everything in here, notice that the uh, sample mean, it's given as 7.25. Population mean we know is 7.5. Uh, the population standard deviation is 0 0.8. over the square root of the sample size, which is 80. And when you do this calculation here, you would end up getting negative 2.795 for the test statistic. And so that there on our diagram is going to be right here. So this is the negative 2.795. So notice that that falls in the rejection region. And so based on this hypothesis test, 
is there evidence that the researcher is correct? There is evidence that they are correct, that the average hours of sleep per night is less than that uh, assumed value of 7.5 for the null, right? So we would reject the null hypothesis that the hours of sleep is uh, greater than or equal to seven and a half hours. Right, so that is the conclusion of the hypothesis test, and that's how you do it manually. That's how you figure out that set uh, test statistic manually with this formula. I introduced this formula in a previous example. And another way you can do this test here is with the calculator. So you go to the main menu, you hit stat, you hit F, uh, F3 for test. If you're going to be doing a Z test, you hit F1, and you're doing it for one sample. And then you get to this input screen here. So the data, you want to make sure it's variable. This here is purely based on the alternative hypothesis. I also mentioned that in the previous example. So there's going to be three different inputs for this. You're going to have not equals, less than, or greater than. And basically it all depends on this alternative hypothesis. So notice we're dealing with less than 7.5. We're doing a left tail test. So this here, that's the sign we're going to put. So we're going to put this is going to be less than that uh, hypothesized value of uh, 7.5. So this here is going to be 7.5 here. The uh, currently accepted mean. And then this standard deviation is the population standard deviation, which is 0.8. The sample mean is 7.25, and then the sample size is 80. And that sample size is 80. And when you do all that, when you execute it, you would get this output screen over here. And as I mentioned in the previous example, the two figures you want to look at is either this figure or this figure over here, right? So that Z value, that P value, the rest is just stuff we already know. So that Z value, negative 2.795, notice that's the same test statistic, Z test statistic that we found manually. So if you're doing it that way, you got to get that critical value first, then see where the uh, does that test statistic lie on your uh, diagram. And notice that it's in the rejection region. Another way, I mentioned this in the previous video too, is looking at that P value. And if you remember, if the p-value is less than the significance level, which is 1% in this case, then you reject the null. If the p-value is greater than, than the significance level, then you accept, continue to accept the null or fail to reject the null. So notice this 2.5943E-03, basically what that means, uh, let me just write it here. It's basically like 2.5943 uh, and then what that E negative 0, 03 means is that you're just going three decimal places to the left. So you'd go one, two, three. So we'd have the decimal place here. These would be zeros. And so notice that we got point, if I erase this, we got point zero zero two which notice it's less than 0 0.01, which is our significance level. What this 0 0.002 is, is basically, so our test statistic is here. I mentioned this before. It's basically this probability over here, right? So it's this region, right? To the left of that test statistic, because we're dealing with a left tail test. Right, so this here is that 0 0.002, while notice this whole area here that's shaded in is 0 0.01. And so that's why if that p-value is less than the significance level, then we know we're in the rejection region. If it was greater than that significance level, then we would be in the acceptance region. Right, so it might be even easier to just look at the p-value in the calculator and then compare it to that significance level. And um, 
Yeah, so same conclusion, whether you do it manually or with the calculator, we are going to be rejecting the uh, null hypothesis that the uh, average hours of sleep in the population of a city is greater than or equal to 7.5. There's evidence that it's less than 7.5, so there is evidence that the researcher is correct.